Today I have two fun ways to use hot foil on your projects. Welcome back, it's time for another Take Two with Therese at Alta New, and I've got two beautiful cards to share with you today using the Gilded Rose Hot Foil Plate. Now this is a very large hot foil die and I have some Aurora hot foil that I'm going to be using which is almost like an iridescent color. It picks up all the other colors that are around it. Now there's two techniques that I'm going to be doing today and the first one is hot foiling on acetate. So I'm making my sandwich here and I find that with the acetate it is kind of static. It sticks to the hot foil itself so sometimes I'm finding it easier just to put the foil onto the acetate and then laying it on top of the hot foil plate. Now I am letting it sit on my hot foil machine before I run it through my die cutting machine. You just need to use whatever sandwich suits your machine. I often like to use a shim. And this acetate that I'm using is heat resistant so you do need to make sure that you use a heat resistant acetate and it is a bit difficult to see here but it's stunning. And it's just another way to extend your hot foil plates and get more out of them by being able to use it on different mediums. Okay, technique number two. We're going to do all the technique -y stuff straight away. Now I've got a flat plate here. You can actually try, if you don't have a metal plate, you can actually try, I've heard, uh, flipping one of your larger dies over, even maybe the back of the Gilded Rose die, which is a nice large flat die to do this technique and heating it up that way. But basically I am hot foiling a die cut here. Now this is the Water Brush Hello die and the sandwich is the hot foil plate, the hot foil with the beautiful side facing down, the die cut. I do use a shim and then the top plate. Heat it up and then run it through my die cutting machine. Now of course I didn't want to waste my initial hot foil that I did with the rose, the gilded rose, so stay tuned to the end of the video and you'll see how I used that in a card as a bonus card today. I do wait for the hot foil to cool down before I remove the release paper and look at this how beautiful is this and you can see that sort of iridescent finish of the Aurora hot foil here and look at that, that plate it's left no residual hot foil. So basically you'll just need to play with if you've got a Gemini play with the temperatures on your machine or you can also play with the number of shims or the sandwiches or the type of cardstock or the type of medium that you're using. I always suggest to practice first and then you won't be disappointed. This hot foil plate has a coordinating stencil so if you don't have a hot foil machine you can simply just get this stencil. It is stunning on its own. So you can basically recreate these cards without the hot foil and I decided to blend it. It's a layering stencil set and it's really easy to use. The, each layers are numbered and there is instructions on the pack but you could also go to the website at Altenew and they will have a download that you can uh, follow about which layers go where but you can it is really easy to pick. I chose some really soft colors here today and all the products that I'll be using today I will link in the description below and you'll find lots of pictures and also a full list of the products that I've used at the blog post as well. I'd love you to, to visit me there and have a look at those and comment that would be lovely. Now what I like to do because it's really hard to mark on the acetate where you actually need to cut so I just use a permanent little black marker and then I can cut it down with my paper trimmer. That's a bonus tip. <laughs> I've cut a rectangle border for A2 size card and basically I held my acetate over top of my blended pattern and then I could attach the border panel directly to the acetate. 
I'm using a sentiment here from the beginning of Builder stamp set. It's a really pretty font combination in these sets. And I have added some of the Alt and New foam tape around the edges of my panel just to pop it up. I could have made this a shaker card, but I wanted the hot foil on the acetate to be the main focus here. And it really is beautiful in real life. And having those muted colors in the background is just lovely. It'd be not really nice in a rainbow sort of colors as well. That would be really pretty. Or even the bold bright pinks. I must try that one as well. <laughs> Okay, so now it's time to use the Waterbrush Hello die cut and I'm popping it up with some Fun Foam using some liquid glue. Do be careful not to get liquid glue on your fingers and touch the hot foil. It's just the same as any sort of metallic cardstock. It will, um, you can't get it off and you'll have to add another layer on top. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I did create another beautiful blended rose. This time I'm going for a landscape A2 card and I just attached a panel of the cardstock that I did the blending on directly to the front of a card and I've added a sub sentiment here from the Hello, no no it's from the Apothecary Labels stamp set which I stamped out I'm just using I think it was the Rouge ink that one so no, I just wanted everything to be quite muted today and I wanted the foiling to be the hot like the highlight <laughs> pardon the bun so I attached the hello directly to the card front and the sub sentiment is straight over top so this is another very simple card but I think having that beautiful big rose in the background is um, makes my heart happy <laughs> I hope you're inspired to try some hot foiling. I've got a couple more videos right here to share with you. If you did enjoy it, please click on the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye. <laughs>